Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and before we get started, there's a few things that I need to mention. The first is regarding my last video. In it, I falsely claimed that this photo here was the Earthrise photo taken during Apollo 8, and that is wrong. Oops. This is the actual Earthrise image taken from Apollo 8 in 1968. The other one was taken in 1969 from Apollo 11. The second thing is that this is kind of a part 2 video, but you don't need to watch part 1 before you watch this. Especially considering that this might be released before part 1. Part 1 will be on Simon Dan's channel by the way. So make sure you go over to Simon Dan's channel to check that out. Anyway, if you're here from Simon Dan's channel, you'll know who I'm talking about today, and that is Caleb Effie. Now I often talk about confused people on this channel, but very rarely does a confused person actually admit that they are confused. Can me and you talk about the southern star trails that everybody's under the impression proves we're on an oblate spheroid? The heliosexuals try to make this so confusing. It's really not that confusing. There are two celestial poles, which makes sense on a globe Earth, but is impossible on a flat Earth. Very simple stuff. They say, well, if the Earth is flat, how come the stars north of the equator spin clockwise, and how come the stars south of the equator spin counterclockwise? When, if you actually do a little bit of research, you'd realize every single star in the sky moves east to west. It's just dependent on perspective which way they turn. So, when you're facing south, it'll look like they're, face, they're going counterclockwise, and then you face north, and it looks like they're going clockwise. Just due to perspective. That is sort of true on the equator on a globe. It doesn't quite work on the Flat Earth model though. You see, on the Flat Earth, there's only one point that they can rotate around, so they should all appear to rotate in the same direction. I've yet to hear a good Flat Earth argument for why there are two celestial poles, when two celestial poles is exactly what we expect to see on a globe. Let me explain. Really weird how easy it was to find this graphic that perfectly explains star trails at the equator, and how it's just due to perspective. Depending on the direction you're aiming your camera or your person, you'll get all these different star trail patterns. Look, just due to perspective, you can make them go clockwise and counterclockwise. They admit it. The problem is, though, is that that does not explain how they work on a flat Earth. Yeah, you can point out things that happen in reality, but that does not explain how they work on a flat Earth. On the globe Earth, it's simple. There are two axes of rotation. Stars north of the equator rotate around the north celestial pole, and stars south of the equator rotate around the south celestial pole. Anyone can point out something that happens in reality. It's very easy to do. Even flat earthers can do that, surprisingly enough. But that does not mean that they're right about what causes that thing. Weird. Found this video on YouTube showing all of the stars at the equator going the exact same direction. They may be going the same direction, but that's not the same as rotating in the same direction. And I'm currently reading your mind, and I know what you're thinking. You poor thing, I feel very sorry for you. I mean, I don't want to know what I'm thinking half the time. Well, what about the pictures in the time lapses where it seems like there's another southern pole star? Wouldn't that suggest that we're on a ball, right? <laughs> no, this is how perspective works, so say this is at the equator, you go more south and you're gonna get a star trail that at the bottom of the firmament going around looking like there's another southern pole star, but there's not. That makes no sense whatsoever. Because here's the thing, as you go further south, the southern celestial pole rises in the sky. Somehow the bottom of the firmament, which is supposed to be the southern celestial pole, has disconnected itself from the ground and is just levitating upwards as you go further south, defying grav... I suppose I can't call it gravity. Defying density. And does that mean that the northern celestial pole is the bottom of the firmament as well? Or does that just work differently? It's funny that whenever a flat earther tries to give me an answer, I end up with more questions than I began with. Found this article pretty quickly explaining that all of the stars move east to west and it's just due to perspective again that you would see them go another direction. The sun, moon, and stars all appear to rise east and set in the west. Interesting. And then it goes on to say that's because of the axial rotation of the earth, but we just think the stars are moving. We don't think we're spinning. So we think that all the stars are moving relative over a stationary plane. We don't think that we're spinning a thousand miles per hour when we can't terrestrially detect that. Weird. We can't detect that, he says. Bob, 
But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Weird, it goes on. And later in this article, to further explain this, facing north, stars rotate counterclockwise. Facing south, stars rotate clockwise. It's all out there. It's, it's not that difficult. Well, that's all good until you're at one of the poles. Then everything rotates in the same direction. But it still doesn't change the fact that flat earthers don't have a good answer for why there are two celestial poles. I did not hear a good answer in this video. I know that you're trying to say that people like myself are confusing everyone, but no. You're trying to confuse everyone. The globe actually makes things very simple in this regard. This is basically the it hurt itself in confusion meme. Anyway, let's take a look at another one of Caleb's videos, shall we? I know you probably don't want me to do that, but we're gonna do that anyway. You are definitely gonna find this a little bit odd if you critically think enough. Ah uh, yes, but you see, I think critically enough to know that when a flat earther is talking about critical thinking, they're probably not talking about critical thinking. You see, it's kind of hard to do critical thinking when you leave out the thinking part of it. It's kind of important. So we all know the brightest object in the sky is the sun. Second would be the moon. And I don't know what you're thinking, but the third, I would think, should be a star. Right? Well, I personally would go with a planet. They tend to be quite bright. In fact, I would be either incredibly surprised or very dead if it's not a planet. Like Sirius, really bright star in the sky, one of those. Definitely not a planet because a planet is supposed to be a rock. And how could that be brighter than a sun that is emitting light, right? Oh no. I can tell where this is about to go. Venus. This is what they're trying to tell everybody, what Venus looks like. And you have to believe that this, the light is hitting this surface and reflecting back brighter than every other thing in the sky. You know that planets like Venus are very close to us compared to stars, right? When something is closer, it usually appears brighter. Well, except for flat earthers and young earth creationists. Where these four forces come from? What exactly are they? What is it again that keeps these protons together? He is before all things. By him, all things consist. That's the best I can come up with. Kent, you didn't need to prove my point, okay? That in him, that he might have all things, he might have all, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. By the way, that was just a completely random Kent Hoven video that I decided to use. I didn't have to trawl through hours of his content to find those few clips. Let me know in the comments if you want me to debunk Kent Hoven sometime in the near future. I I just don't get it. And let's let's talk. What is this? These are supposed to be the two of the same planets? Like. Well... So you might have heard about this thing that Venus has called an atmosphere, and we also have one. Now, one of the differences between Venus's atmosphere and Earth's atmosphere is that Venus's atmosphere is quite opaque. Now, if you were to actually read the thing on your screen, you would be able to find the answer. Imagine that. You said in part one that you're going to read more. So please read more. Because if we look closely at that first image on your screen, it says Venus surface from Pioneer. This means the surface unobstructed by the atmosphere. We're gonna keep going, but let me just show you a video of what Venus actually looks like through a telescope. Does that look like it's reflecting light? Yes, actually, it does look like it's reflecting light, given that it's not just a circle. If you hadn't told me that was Venus through a telescope, I might think that it's someone filming the moon with their phone camera. And also, if you want to get a good image of Venus through a telescope, learn to adjust the settings on your camera. Good photography is a little bit more complex than point a camera at something and take a photo. Third, Jupiter. Let's keep going. Mars, Mercury, and then Sirius. You have to believe that these rocks that are supposed to be orbiting us are all reflecting light back to us, which just doesn't even account for the inverse square law of light. If you look into that, every time you double the distance of a luminary becomes a fourth of the brightness, but don't mind that when we're talking about then that's that's when emitting light that's not reflecting light anyway i suppose caleb might be wondering why the moon is so bright when that's just reflecting light as well it really is just a case of planet closer so it's brighter it's not that difficult to figure it out to put it in perspective if venus were a meter away from earth the closest star 
would still be over 15 kilometers away at least. That is 15,000 times the difference, in case you didn't know. The same people that told you this makes sense produced this image for you. Yes, this is an actual image from NASA that they expected everybody to think was real. Okay, so that image has had processing. But just because it has had processing, it doesn't mean that it's fake. For example, I'm black and white now. I guess that means that this video is just completely CGI. Right? So the spacecraft that took that image had a high resolution camera in black and white and a low resolution camera in color. To add color to the Earth, they simply overlaid the color image that they took onto the Earth. This doesn't mean that it's CGI, it means that they decided to play around a bit with how it looked. And unless you're new here, you should know, I don't believe in planets. Minus the T. That's why NASA says T minus. Take the T out of Satan. <laughs> Spell NASA. So when NASA says T minus, it literally just means time until. It's not some kind of subliminal message. But no, no, no. I, d I don't believe in any planets at all. There's no planets in the sky. We are not on a planet. I think that every single person on this earth should remove that word from their vocabulary, honestly. Just because you don't believe in them, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Your personal incredulity is not an argument. I'm not going to remove the word planet from my vocabulary because planets do exist. We're on a plane, dude. <laughs> a plane, an infinite plane that could go on forever for all we know. We're all on a plane and it's going on forever? Please give me a parachute. I want off. Anyway, I think that's enough Caleb Fee for today, at least for me. If you haven't seen Simon Dan's video, go check that out. If it hasn't come out yet, then make sure you do catch it when it does come out. If you've already seen it, then stick around, I've got other videos. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you think. I will, or have, seen you over on Simon Dan's channel. Between you and me, thank you for watching.